This episode of The Republic is brought to you by Audible for a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash GameBreaker. GameBreaker TV. What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Republic, episode 134 for April 25th, 2013. On today's show, all the blogs, Bioware reveal the reasoning behind the 2.0 balance changes. We look at all the major class changes and discuss the cap on the mission log, all that and more. Plus, probably not your viewer questions, because it's like a nine-hour show. So, <laughs> Joining me, as always, Mr. Larry Everett from Massively. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. It's an awesome day today. Sunny it's outside a, in the Midwest. Here and it's always sunny here. It's kind of. Yeah. And joining us as always, it's Mr. Wait. Nope. Nope. You're not Justin. No, Wait. I am not Justin. You're not Justin. You have nope. a lot more hair than Justin. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope so. At least on my head. Uh, Laura Williams joining us on the show this week. Follow her on Twitter at uh, Void Binks with M Y N X. Uh, yep. Hey, guys. So, uh, who the hell are you, and how do how does how does how does Larry know you? And um, Larry is uh, one of my guildmates, and he asked me to come hang out on the show today. And you are like the, so the guild expert, from what I understand. So, well, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, if we if we ever have any questions, if if we ever have any questions in the guild, they don't go to me; they go to Laura. Actually, <laughs> don't go to the journalist. Go to Laura. Right. There you go. I see where this is going. Okay. If I'm prettier than you are, Larry. That's actually, you're probably <laughs> right. That's probably the reason why. <laughs> All right. So lots happened this week. Uh, 2.0 uh, brought with it a host of balance changes. Bioware released a, a series of blog posts to explain all the reasoning behind this. So first of all, the big one that affects the game across the board, um, starting, of course, with a la Critty. A la Critty. <laughs> We talked about or, alac- so, or as, or as, as the dictionary says, no, I have no alacrity. idea what you're saying. <laughs> you say alacrity, I say alacrity. Let's call the whole thing off. All right, but we need to talk about. Uh, we talked about this. Well, we saw the patch notes. Um, it's been significantly improved. Have have people been gearing for this a lot more in in 2.0? No, no, no. no. What no, I, um, I think it's honestly pretty garbage. Uh, so I put a whole bunch of alacrity on, and I can cast point oh one second faster. We. So it's not doesn't seem to be working out as uh, intended. Um, so it in, what does it do? It increases the activation speed of all abilities, right? And then it also lowers the cooldown of instants. So I mean, that's definitely what people would expect from like a haste mechanic. Uh, did it need to do that previously? Would it? Would it? Yeah, yeah. The the only real difference between uh, alacrity previously and alacrity now is that it it affects the overall global cooldown if you have so much alacrity. Uh, the main uh, the main issue that we've run into with alacrity is is not that it doesn't do what it says because it does. It does reduce the cooldown of uh, significant, actually. I mean, I, it's not a whole lot, but it is significant in comparison to not having it at all. But the thing is, you have to give up so much other, so much more other stats in order to make, uh, in order to put alacrity in that it's not worth. Th- the math pretty much says don't do it because don't you're not it. getting anything. Now, yeah. what about how does this work? Because on top of that, the animation will also play quicker, correct? So, and yes. With how Swotor worked, I mean, that's kind of hilariously bad. Um, but <laughs> especially, I mean, the, how does this affect our conversation we had last week? Because we we sort of talked about the return of the ability delay. Is that affecting this at all? I haven't noticed anything affecting me. Yeah, it's, nothing. It's- no, it, it uh, yeah, sure. I guess uh, technically, if the animation sped up, that the ability delay would be less. But it's still, 
going to be there. It's not going to affect the, you know, it's not going to affect the ability delay. It's just making it a little faster. And what's this? This is something, there was a big change to Alacriti that I didn't realize from the patch notes, but so it it's also increases your resource generate regen now? Yes. Like, um, what's that all about? Okay, resource resource meaning your your force power or your energy or ah. your heat regen heat that sort of. Thing. What else is there? Ammo, ammo, ammo. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's a good thing. I mean, I been how how is that balancing out? Is that it? Could it possibly be too much, or is it just is this whole al alacrity just is everyone just throwing <laughs> out the window? Like everyone tested it, put all the points in, and just said like, don't do it. That is what we're, that's the information that we're getting is that you don't just don't do it. I mean, it's, I guess in certain fringe circumstances, it might be worth doing, um, like somebody that doesn't need some of the other stats, like, I, but currently, I mean, for instance, if you didn't need a lot of endurance, I guess you could put alacrity in there, but it just, I don't know. I, I don't see any. Any, uh, no benefit, benefit in PvP or anything like that. I mean, I could see, I could see Bioware's logic here. I mean, if you're casting, you know, if you're casting faster, you're going to need to be spending. You're going to be spending more resources. You're going to also need more resources back quicker. Um, but I guess wouldn't that be like a gearing decision? Yeah, the, yeah. I, I don't know what. what I, can you, Laura? I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this into Laura because she uses. I don't use in my builds. I don't use any alacrity ever. It doesn't. It doesn't affect me at all. I don't have any cast times really. Whereas Laura's um, uh, sniper does have more. So I don't know. What What would you? Would, can you think of any? Basically, everything that I've read for 2.0 and dealing with alacrity is uh, for snipers, and I specifically happen to be marksman spec. Um, it, it's just not worth it. You simply can't get enough. Uh, you have to sacrifice too many other stats in order to get enough alacrity to make it worth it at all um personally i don't have problems with energy management for my resources now anyways so not having any of my gear doesn't affect me and in pvp i mean you it's pretty fast paced as it is you're gonna burst everything up front and then if you die you die i mean i get jumped a lot so it, I, I don't notice it sounds like a bust. there either. <laughs> Basically sounds like a bust. Sounds like something's not really working out right. All right I mean, I'm, I'm not willing to sacrifice power and accuracy in order to get enough alacrity to make a difference. All right, let's talk about DOT stuff. So damage over time abilities have seen some changes to make them less uh, costly to keep up and spread around. So does that mean that they cost less to cast so you can throw them on multiple enemies more easily? Is that what they're going for? Wow, I, I see. That's it's really fun. It's really funny. They they throw all these things in there that you know they say make a big difference, but when you get into actual practical gameplay and how it actually works. gameplay, and uh, and you it it doesn't seem to do a whole lot. I mean, even in because uh, I do with with my Marauder, I deal with uh, dots. That's like pretty much all I do, and and. Uh, I, I really haven't noticed any difference. It hasn't. The, the the things I have, I'll tell you what I have noticed in difference is uh, is accuracy is different now uh, because I have less of it than I had before, and I had to re redo some things. So I so I gained more accuracy in both uh, both my PvP and my PVE set, um, and also um, accuracy accounts for everything now. So. Uh, your your tech your tech powers like the the ones that uh, uh, bounty hunters and uh, healing heal spec operatives uh, use they have they require accuracy now and uh, sort sorts now need uh, need accuracy to do their uh, their dots and do their uh, light chain lightning and that sort of thing so there's all sorts of so accuracy is actually the biggest deal currently with the changes of 2.0 that we didn't see before and it quite frankly it's kind of irritating because you we had all these gear you, we knew the math before we knew how that was going to play out and we knew we could dump this into that and now it's just kind of it's totally changed our our, our uh our way of thinking when we gear well, well I, I, think think it's, I mean really 
I was gonna say, like, I mean, I can understand, like, on paper, I mean, this sounds like, you know, other games, this is something, it sounds like something that a lot of people would enjoy, like, run into a group of mobs, tag everything with your dots, run around while they die, like, it sounds like something yeah, on that's, paper. Yeah, that's fun. Is it, is it working really like that, or is... Yeah, it, but the thing is, it's kind of always worked like that, and that's, that's, that's what makes it really interesting, is why did they change it at all? <laughs> Because it's, it, I, I didn't really know. The thing is, I didn't really notice any issues with uh, dots. However, and this, I'll throw this one back to Laura because she, she was a uh, lethality spec at one point with uh, her sniper, and now she's not. Because uh, of what, what was the reasons behind that changes? It had to do with pow overall power, right? Marksman does more damage. Yeah. Lethality so was a, a dot spec. But I. I hope at some point that they do buff lethality because I loved throwing grenades on things and I loved breaking CC and making everybody in the raid rage. It was awesome. Which is <laughs> the important part. Shields have also seen some big changes. Um, so they now work against all damage types. So that's going to make them a lot yes. more important, it sounds like, in the game. This is huge. Isn't it? This is a really big change. This, yeah. That is a fantastic change. Go yeah. ahead. Tell them how. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk about that. <laughs> Talking about what shields? Shields. Why is it a fantastic change? Uh, well, it's nice to now have my shields be able to block force damage. Um, and ballistic shield, my big one, got changed so that I can now just drop it anywhere. I don't have to be in cover. It's not targeted on me. I can just plop it down and move at will. With such yeah. a huge change now, if you think about it, I mean, it was wonderful. I love it. It's such a major change to how damage is calculated, though. So, like, that must mean, I would think, that there's a lot of balance adjustments across all levels of content just to compensate this. I mean, and that sounds like an incredible amount of work. I agree. I don't know, necessarily know that they're doing that. Uh, the th hey. what it, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and they may, the new content might be uh, compensated for it, but the old content, I don't think they're going through and going, oh, well, they're going to have more shield now than they had defense uh however that being said um there are a lot of uh like some of the old calculations that that were out for say uh uh juggernaut they uh the old calculations told you to dump a whole bunch of points into defense uh and then uh secondary is shield and then tertiary is uh, is absorbed well now it's kind of flip flopped in the sense that you now want to put all the stuff that you would put in defense, you kind of want to put in shield, and then next is absorb, and then last is defense. It's not exactly like that, but it's kind of like that because defense now counts less in as far as the whole uh, spectrum goes, and because now you're now since shield does block everything. It is now your most important stat as a is, as a tank. This is going to be really interesting to kind of keep an eye on. I'm mean, wonder if see people yeah. are just going to start grenading their way through the old content, just like just just being a. Oh, I can't wait. Out. Well, the the only the only uh, I I will say this: the only the tanks use a shield. So uh, except, well, I take that back. There is a shield for there is a shield for like snipers and that sort of thing. So yeah. Don't forget uh, my shield. You love my that's shield. That's right. Yes, I do. Um, uh, finally, the accuracy. The accuracy stat is yeah. now super important uh, in regards to your sustained damage on boss fights. So was this just not a big deal before, or is it just a lot more now and a lot more noticeable? See, I don't understand that because as a sniper, and definitely for our bounty hunters too, accuracy was very important before. Um, I, I think maybe it's just because they changed it so that now force wielders, like damage sorts, need it. What do you, how do you feel about the whole, are you, are you okay with the whole increased uh, reliance on accuracy across the board, pretty much? It doesn't bother me. I mean, I didn't feel like I was cheated before because I had to gear for it or spec for it, and other people didn't. I just assumed that that's how it is. I mean, it's what I've had to do in other games. How do you feel yeah. about it, Lara? The only, the only thing, I know, I know that um, there's been one or two people in our guild that have complained that oh man <laughs> i gotta gear i gotta redo my gear you know and i am i'm, I'm imitating her husband actually that's what it is yeah, um <laughs> it was pretty funny yeah he was he, he, he was saying um his tears were delicious 
he was he was saying he was saying man this the uh the heel spec sorts are better gear than i am because they have the heel specs i apparently i guess don't need as much accuracy because they're shooting at, heels they're don't not, miss yeah heels don't miss that's right unless so, it's alicia and then she'll heal a rock yeah um so so yeah i think that uh, i think that's the only tears that i've seen as far as uh accuracy is concerned so yeah. All right, let's move on. To, let's talk about some class specific changes and what Bioware's reasoning is behind them. So, since classes are shared across, you know, all the factions with different names, um, our producer basically arbitrarily chose the ones that he thought were the coolest. So, sorry if you don't <laughs> like my list. First yeah. up, the Imperial <laughs> Agent Evasion now removes all hostile removable effects for all agents, not just operatives. Um, and for I also a really like this change. I, it's such a critical ability. I mean, it makes sense to, to just not limit it to, our, to one advanced class, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that change. People throw dots on me and bam, they're gone. Uh, Marksman Tree. <laughs> now scales exceptionally well with snipers and the ability to uh, follow through. So this, this now plays well. This, this, this kind of sounds like it plays well with all of Critty. But since that's <laughs> you would think, you would but think. not quite so much. No, not the good news for follow marksmen. through is nice because there's uh, more abilities that will trigger it faster. I mean, they lowered the damage a little bit, but I'm using it five times as much as I was able to. So I think it's a good change. Lara, what do you think it about engineering? En engineering um, still as strong as AOE, but they can now focus down one target more easily. So anyone I, want to freak out I about see the classes the, being made the same? Hello. I, I, I want to see the math on that one. I really do. Because I, they have engineering has never, ever, ever been one that anybody ever took, really, when it came down to it. Um it just seemed not true. You had people who were doing a lethality engineering hybrid. Oh well, okay, all right. Uh, yes, you had the you had the hybrids, but you never had anybody that that went all the way engineering and said this is the best one for AOE damage ever. And that's just people. And well, to be to be fair though, most people didn't take lethality either. And for some reason, Laura was able to make that one awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I I want to see I want to see the math. I want to see that in action. I want to see somebody actually able to use uh, engineering as effectively as a uh, marksman or even lethality for that matter. I just Anyone play that? Let's talk about that. I mean, on the, the lethality front, Bioware seemed to be pretty happy with their damage, but they added some elements to spice up their gameplay. So, uh, Laura, you have any experience with that? Anyone play lethality enough to talk about it? Not since the patch went in. What? Right. what? Yeah, it, what, what's the, I mean, what's the big, the, the main thing that, that Lethality did was dots. What, uh... Well, you had, you had your dots, your grenade, and then your, um, corrosive dart, and the big thing was call, which would, um, give you double ticks on the dots when you hit it. Well, which ha, ha, have, there. I mean, honestly, with the patch, I don't, I haven't tried it. <laughs> Marks, marksman is the way to go. There you have it, folks. If you are, I a promise. Sniper. If you, if I come back, I will try it next time and tell you about it. <laughs> right, how about Jedi Knight? So the Watchman Tree um, is strong. It's got good damage, good utility. Uh, Bioware basically worked a little bit on that, made them better than they already do. What do they do here? Watchman OP. Well, okay, it depends. Watchman is uh, you counter. That's the. Uh, uh, annihilation spec, which is what I play on my Marauder most of the time. And were they overpowered? Actually, I, I don't necessarily know that they were ever overpowered. Uh, a lot of people played it because uh, dots couldn't be uh, blocked. However, now they can. So um, it's uh, it, it's really what it, what it boiled down to is blocks. Uh, dots could never be blocked, and so people use that in PvP quite a bit. And um, yeah, I don't think it was overpowered ever, really. It's just now everything else has been brought into balance with that, I guess. 
What would you guys say? What would you say? Because there's so many more notes here. There's so many more class specific oh, yeah. changes. What do you guys? What would you guys say is like the, the biggest, like hardest hitting things that change the game so much? I mean, there's so much here. I mean, vigilance. There's like all. Oh, there's so much power tech shields, like tech. I mean, what what's really like the biggest game changers here for the way the game's being played right now? I, I that's a that's a really good question because I don't think that. I, I don't think that it, as far as the overall spectrum of the game is concerned that anything has really been changed hugely with with in each individual class we're still seeing the the same uh, this the same classes are still the same are still the best classes which is kind of a little bit disconcerting to me because I, I would like to have seen uh, certain uh, like for instance I would have liked to have seen the power tech uh, step up as a really decent tank in PvE situations. Uh, however, right now, uh, th there is... A, a, hold on, uh, I take that back. There is a significant change when dealing with tanks. Uh, I was, we were talking with, um, with one of the guys from Mox, Memories of Zendor, uh, the other day, and it looks to be that uh, Juggernauts are going to be your best tanks overall. Like it was originally, it was originally the assassin tank, or, um, uh, yeah, word shadow tank. That's the shadow. other side. Words are slipping me, but uh, it was the uh, assassin or the shadow tank that was the best because they could uh, maintain uh, better aggro because they could do more damage than than the juggernaut tank. However, now with some of the changes, uh, with uh, defense and whatnot, the 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 assassin and shadow are still doing the same amount of damage, but they are they cannot absorb they're as squishy. much damage. Yeah, they're they're getting more and more squishy. The more numbers that are being added to it, and um, so now the juggernaut tank is looking to be your best tank. I feel like juggernaut threat got improved a lot too. I've it's run with a, a bunch of guys who. Uh, you know, they're able to hold AoE threat a lot better than they were before the patch. Last Unless, we of course, to... they're accidentally heading their detente. I don't know anybody who does that. <laughs> Lara, last week you talked about uh, that pending fix for the naked PvP. Is that, uh, are you no longer naked? What's going on? Is it fixed? I know, I'm sad. I'm sad. I can no longer PvP naked. I'm... Is it over? Fixed? The fun is all all gone. Yeah, it's it's sad. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, there is there has been a fix. You can no longer PvP naked. Sorry. Sad However, days. yeah, I know, right? It was but, good well lasted. It was good well. <laughs> However, here, here here this is this is the funny thing about that fix is that um what did they fix it in 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 this last patch? I think they did. I have to I have to double check that, but. Uh, the funny thing about that fix is that uh, you could take all the the mods out of your armor and put them uh, and put on an empty shell, and it would adjust. So it was Yay, almost slave girl it, bikinis. <laughs> so it almost adjusts. It almost fixed, but not quite. We will have to see. I, I haven't heard anything since uh, uh, yesterday's patch, so we'll find out. All right, next up, let's talk next about week. Eric Musco. He talked about this uh, mission log cap. Check this out. Here's the quote. We have seen a few requests since the launch of the Rise of the Hut Cartel for the mission log size to be increased above 25, and I wanted to explain why that limit is currently in place. The mission log, just like all other components of the game, directly affects a, player performance, a player's performance in-game. The goal in limiting the log to only 25 missions is to help mitigate potential area server hitches and ability lag that may encounter uh, they may encounter simply put players could see decreased game performance with a mission log larger than 25 that makes me want to laugh kind of does right is this perhaps they should get another hamster for the server this is 2013 right is it I think let me check right? my calendar <laughs> All right, just checking. All right, so it sounds like we're stuck with a mission log for 25 uh, of 25 for the foreseeable future, unless the technology somehow just, you know, NASA comes up with it that we can get a couple extra 
items in our mission log. I don't know. Is 25 enough? I mean, why are people freaking out? I mean, is it, is it just not enjoyable to play with it? To play with only 25? It seems like... I think 25 is usually okay, but if you're somebody that's going and picking up all of the daily, like the macabre dailies and the CGI dailies and the seeker droid... Wait. Yeah, seeker droid dailies and macro binocular dailies, it can get clogged down. I mean, just on as top a side of note, all of the weekly raid quests. And just as a side note, World of Warcraft's still at 25. I mean, the, the thread was specifically kind of calling, asking for 50. Um, yeah, but World of Warcraft is also like eight years old. This is true. It's almost 10. Um, so I feel like they can, they can use that as an excuse. I feel like there's a joke here that I could bring up about the cartel stores. But I think I'll oh, a little God. Bit. Yes, you can get 25 more mission unlocks for $3.50. Why not? Why not? Why not? All right, let's do some viewer questions. Uh, first up this week, actually, if you guys have questions for the Republic crew, send them in to submit at gamebreaker.tv. Send us your question, and we will put it on the air. Stephen Robert Woodhouse. So this one's you first, Laura. It says, uh, what comes after 2.0? Will we see more frequent content now that they have a solid free-to-play model? What do you think? Uh, I certainly hope so. What I feel like the we'll end of McKeb just kind of left you on a cliffhanger. So if they don't put something out fairly soon, um, what would be soon for be you? Bored. What kind well, of I mean, this could, I, honestly, I hardly felt like this patch could really qualify as a full expansion. So I would expect to see significant amount of content in probably about another month. One month. You're giving them one month before people are completely bored, huh? That's right. What else are you, you, what are you saying? Uh, well, they, they, they did say that they were going to be on an eight week cadence. Um, so, I mean, that's when well, we see more frequent content. Now. I think I, I, I get that's kind of a loaded question to be perfectly honest, because they have been on a six to eight week cadence for content. Um, and they and I think have cartel market additions should really count as content though did they count those as, a, as one of the six week cadence it's possible i, I feel like and i agree stuff does and that shouldn't count as content i i, I agree I, I do have to agree with you on that that if if they are counting cartel market con as content yeah i don't i don't think that's but i don't think that's the issue here i will we see more yes i think chat room says chat room says count breathing as content Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, next up from Donald totally. Day. Donald uh, says, what's uh, your predictions for the super secret space project? On rails or free roam? Will there be new ships? Pilot levels like SWG? Space PvP? Smuggling runs? I really hope it's not more of the same. What do you think, Larry? What do you think we'll see out of the super secret space program? Gosh, that, one's, that one is a really, really tough question that I... They are so quiet on this front they are really really quiet on this front and it kind of kind of makes me sad because this is this is something that that i'm would like to see because quite frankly i know like three people that do space on a regular basis and uh the current space stuff and however if it were to change to something that was a little more uh free form uh almost uh jump to light speed kind of thing um there would God, be do you really see them doing that i just i just do, don't see it happening right now like i see I that like see happening i don't see that that'd happening be like a whole other game yeah i do i see that do i want i know you want that Absolutely. i know I larry really, really wants want that that's like larry's like but, i want yeah. that but like being realistic do you think you're gonna see that i don't think we're gonna see something to that level i do think I really think we're going to see something that's a little more freeform, though. A little, a little more. I don't know what does that how mean? much. What does more. that mean? A little that, more. Is... You can wander around a little bit and uh, in your spaceship, and I think it's still going to be. You're still going to have the third person view. I don't. I still think it's going to be uh, your primary spaceship. Um, however, that being said, I don't think we're going to see it anytime this year. If we, you know. It'll be next year before we see something that big. Laura, what are your predictions? Free roam, rails, pilot levels. What do you think? 
I, honestly, if we see anything new, I think it's going to be more rail. And hopefully they turn down the difficulty. I don't personally do space because I can't. The three dimensional doesn't doesn't work for me. So you're, but you're, my you're, husband you're was with... doing them a lot, and he faithfully every day did every single space mission. And he said they were horrible <laughs> at how hard they were. So you're going with just more of the same, pretty much. Is I, I actually... think we're going to end up with more of the same for right now. I think before you see anything that's uh, free, where people can just fly wherever they want to fly, I think that's going to be a whole other box that you buy. All right, last up this week from Wine Dodger. Wine says, uh, what's your take on the excessively fast endgame gearing in 2.0? Excessively fast. Uh, looks like a uh, full Arcanian and one-third Underworld in five days this person did. So, I don't know, Laura, what's your feeling on uh, how fast the endgame gearing is in 2.0? Um... Well, I think humans have gotten really lucky with drops. Um, the stuff that we've got, we've given to our tanks and healers first. Um, but that being said, running the flashpoints, the black market gear is Arcanian level. So I don't find it difficult to gear at all. People are getting in there and running flashpoints. You, unless you just really have bad RNG luck, you're going to get geared pretty fast. Larry, what do you think about endgame gearing? Is it too quick? Um, you no, know, see, I don't... I. I have to disagree with with his uh, his sentiment here. I don't think it is too fast. I think I mean Arcanian gear. How he did? Okay, actually, first off, I think he's lying a little bit because to have full Arcanian gear, you have to have got more uh, more comms than you possibly could get uh, on, a, on with the weekly cap. Maybe he's exactly. I think he's maybe. talking about the token drops. It's uh, it's possible, maybe. In which know? case, yeah, I mean, he mm -hmm. absolutely could have. I don't know. May okay, but saying that he does, uh, I still I still think it's okay because he's, it, it's no it's no slower than uh, or faster than any other gear uh, gear grind in any other game. To be perfectly honest, because basically what they what they've done is they've every everything that you had before the. Although they said they said they did weren't going to make it useless, they've pretty much made everything you, you had before useless. And now this is the new grind. This is the new new levels, and it doesn't take any more or less time than it took previously. Mr. Larry Everett, follow him on the Twitter at Shadow S H A D D O E, and of course go over to MassLivy.com and read his work over there with the Hyperspace Beacon. What's uh, you're doing a little experiment over there on the Beacon, are you? I am. I'm doing an experiment. I've got uh, I've got a free to play character, and I'm going to level that guy up to 50, and uh, try to do some end game without spending a dime. <laughs> See, man, I read it. I read the hyperspace beacon. <laughs> so you should. Do. Uh, Laura Williams, follow her on the Twitter at Void Minx M Y N X. Thanks very much for coming on this show. Thanks for having me. And follow her on the Twitter at Void, V-O-I-D-M-Y-N-X. You can follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon. Follow Game Breaker TV at Game Breaker TV. We do the show live every single Monday at 6 PDT. Hopefully we'll be back on schedule next week. Bit of a technical hiccup. Yay. But we will see you. Have a great week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week on More Republic. Bye.